Okay, the first topic today is going to be writing functions well. A lot of this material is uh, going to be, you know, advice. Uh, by no means would we hold you um, to the extent that we would, you know, an actual practitioner or someone who's out there and working, but these are definitely going to be characteristics that you should definitely strive towards as you're composing functions within your program. So the first, um, I guess, slide here is writing functions well. Functions are going to be the first line of organization of any program. They allow us to decompose um, different, uh, our, our program into different parts. They allow us to reuse uh, code and they allow us to uh, really enhance readability pr by providing descriptive names to different blocks of codes that we may execute repeatedly or even once throughout our applications. So with this in mind, the uh, obvious question is, well, how can we write functions well? First and foremost, functions should be small. If a function exceeds about 40 lines, it's too long according to the Google C++ style guide. For the purposes of this course, I'd probably go even smaller than that. So as you're writing your functions, if you find that they're um, going over, there, there's a lot of vertical, um, lines there in terms of what you're writing, do take a step back and question whether or not uh, you could partition that up into multiple uh, functions. One of the rationales for this is that smaller functions are easier to not only read, but also to maintain and test. If I am going in to look at your code, uh, you probably know what you've written in most places, hopefully, though uh, for me it would be new. And if uh, things are written in small kind of more digestible pieces of information. It's a lot easier for me to get through that or anyone else who's reading. Furthermore, if functions are small, that means they're obviously uh, direct and we'll get into how they should do one thing shortly, but they'd ideally be easier to test as well in this scenario. In regards to block and indenting, uh, in the clean code textbook, uh, Markin suggests that blocks within if statements, else statements, while statements, et cetera, should be one line long and that whatever the contents are of those um, statements, the line should probably be a function call to go ahead and take that information, the sequence of statements that we'd like to execute in that scenario or under that condition and provide a descriptive name to it and move the code into a function. That way we can see, okay, while subcondition, maybe we have a nice function called do something or whatever. I mean, that's a lot easier to read than getting into it and then having to decompose and go, well, what, what do these sequence of steps actually do? If they have a name, it's very, it, it, as long as it's self-describing, it's very clear what's, uh, what's happening at that point. So not only does this uh, keep functions small, while the functions uh, description names, as we mentioned before, it uh, helps us document what's going on under that scenario. And this, uh, I think this would be a realistic expectation in this class, but the indentation level of a function should not be greater than one or two. Meaning if you start getting in, in terms of um, the actual indentation, if you get too many levels deep, there's probably some code within those uh, deeper levels that could be taken out and put, it, uh, and put into a um, function. This is uh, <clears throat> very critical. So functions should do one thing. Functions should do one thing. They should do it well. They should do it only. The function should only perform steps that are, that are one level below its stated name. So if you have a function that says drive car, the list of um, statements that should be below it should be kind of one level below that. So what it takes to drive the car. So get in, turn car on. Uh, move to drive back you know, up or move forward or wherever you go from there. Uh, but it's kind of one level below whatever the name is communicating because you're implementing um, whatever that um, descriptive name is communicating. So if a function is doing more than one thing, you really need to extract another function from it with a name that is not a restatement of its implementation. So pulling it out and going, okay, well, you know, I, I had this sequence of steps to drive the car, which was like put key in ignition, um, turn key, uh, you know, wait until the engine turns over, release, et cetera. That could be in kind of the function turn on car. And then the sequence of steps that uh, define what that process is would be within the body of that function. 
Okay, so this is maybe a little bit more, um, I don't want to say difficult, but uh, it, 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 this might take you a little more time to wrap your head around what this means. Uh, function should have one level of abstraction. And the higher the level of abstraction, the less detail, the lower of level, um, the more detail. Within our functions, we should not be mixing different levels of abstraction because this can make the code very difficult to read and then as well, potentially confusing. Therefore, it's important that we make sure all statements within the function are at the same level of abstraction. So I'll give two shots on trying to uh, maybe helpfully, hopefully uh, introduce this. If you open up a textbook and you look at the chapter list, you could think about that as being maybe one high level of abstraction. The contents of the chapter are likely communicated in kind of a broad and overarching manner. So maybe classes might be one chapter within an intro to a programming textbook. As you actually begin to read through that chapter, you'll see different headings. Each heading would be a lower level of abstraction that kind of re relates back to that overarching principle or concept that's being introduced. And as you continue to go through, there might be subheadings and sub subheadings, et cetera. But each kind of one of those headings is taking you down a level in terms of details. Our function should be just like that. Going back to the car example, if you think about it, um, okay, drive car or something, you, you could have like, if car is not on, turn car on. Okay, that's cool, but you wouldn't go like, if car is not on, uh, introduce a block that turns the car on within the within that function. Uh, th that's a lower level of abstraction. That's a level of detail that's better um, written within a function with its own name to describe that process. So one idea that uh, to, to more or less motivate this is to follow the step down rule. Write code that reads like a top down narrative, similar to how we kind of introduce the uh, you know outline of a textbook in a way. I mean, we're not writing an outline, but the idea kind of holds. You have maybe one broader function that has the list of chapters or the big like steps at a very high level of um, abstraction, and then each of those calls kind of gets down lower and lower into the nitty gritty details. For in for instance, turn car on. Um, you know, that might have the steps involved with turning the key over and then, you know, it, uh, the ignition would happen. Well, that could be another function because that process is going to be at a lower level of detail. And as you go down, you're actually getting nearer and nearer to kind of the uh, underlying processes that collectively make up uh, this overarching action. So every function should be followed by those at the next level of abstraction and don't mix varying levels of abstraction within a single function. So functions should have descriptive names and this is not always as intuitive as you might think uh, like off the bat. A lot of thought can go into creating names for your functions that uh, communicate well what it is they're doing. Long names are going to be okay, and don't be afraid to take the time to ensure that they're descriptive. The, this will pay off um, substantially as you kind of continue moving through because it just, it, it just creates code that's very well self-documenting. It's very clear what's happening, and you're not leaving someone who might come uh, to main your, maintain your code at a later time guessing what's actually occurring. Using consistent names is also going to be important with similar phraseology throughout your code. Uh, this will help ensure that the function does what the reader is expected. So if you have something like um, a function that sets a value, use the same kind of um, phraseology throughout your code. If you have something that's getting a value, uh, you know, use same similar phraseology throughout your code. Don't mix stuff up. Uh, be predictable and use uh, consistent naming throughout uh, your applications. Function should have a small number of arguments. So this is going to be perhaps a little extreme for some of the things we're doing in this course. I know not all of the MP prop, uh, prompts will likely um, in, kind of enforce this notion, but it's definitely something to be uh, considerate of or cognizant of. And, you know, really try to incorporate this practice as you're going through uh, this course and later ones. So Martin, again, in the clean code textbook suggests that the ideal number of arguments for a function is zero. 
followed by one and closely by two. He then goes on to specify that these arguments, uh, that three arguments are to be avoided and more than three is just, it really requires special, special justification if you're going to take that approach. One of the reasons for this is that the more arguments, the more difficult it would be for a reader to interpret what the function does. Uh, it's going to take more cognitive load to go ahead and deduce what's happening within the uh, function, how the different arguments are being applied uh, to produce the output, whatever it may be. Moreover, the more arguments, the more uh, difficult that function will be to test. Uh, because what if we have more than one argument, more than zero arguments, uh, anytime we get into you know, two or more, there's going to be more combinations of input that we would have to test to ensure that we're getting the desired output 